I had a plan to create a project in which I can generate a maze inside Arduino code and be able to navigate through this maze using buttons or joystick. Before I could look at the available algorithms to do it, I needed to come up with a way of storing maze layout in Arduino Sketch. In this video I will do it for a small fixed maze layout and I will do it with, yes, you guessed it, with 8x8 LED matrix controlled by MAX7219 chip. Let's get to it. This project is fairly simple, but unfortunately it requires quite a lot of wiring. We start with connecting ground and 5 volts of Arduino to the breadboard ground and 5 volt sections. We would need two push buttons in this project. One for selecting the direction of movement and the second to move us in the maze in the selected direction. One side of both push buttons is connected to 5 volts and the other side is connected to ground through pull-down resistor as well as connected to digital pin of Arduino. First push button is connected to digital pin 2 and the second one is connected to digital pin 3. Both would be using interrupts. Then we have four LEDs which are used to indicate which direction of movement is currently selected. All four LEDs are connected to ground via current limiting resistor and to Arduino pins as specified here. Here is how to connect the LED matrix controlled by MAX7219 chip. After connecting ground and 5 volts, data in pin goes to Arduino digital pin 11, DS pin goes to Arduino digital pin 7 and clock goes to digital pin 13. I'm gonna use LiliPad LEDs as they have built-in resistor which makes wiring that much easier. Now let's look at the code. Few declarations to get started. You would need LED control library to control the matrix connected to MAX7219 chip. I have a full tutorial on how to control those matrices. Please check it out. Then we declare four LED pins and then pins to which MAX719 chip is connected. Then we have three key variables. The first two are the coordinates of our current maze position. We would start in column zero and row two. The rows and columns are indexed from 0 to 7. And then we have a direction variable. 1 stands for up, 2 stands for right, 3 stands for down, and 4 stands for left. And finally, we declare 8x8 matrix. Then we have few actions that need to be performed in setup function. We declare interrupts on pin D2 and D3, linked to two connected push buttons. On D2, each time the button will be pressed, we will be executing function change direction. On D3, each time the button will be pressed, we will execute function move in the maze. Then LED pins need to be declared as output. Then there are a few controls for LED matrix to clear it and set LED intensity. And then we send signals to LED pins to indicate that the starting direction is up. Then we have a set of tables that store the layout of the maze. Let's look at the first table, which stores possible movement for the up direction. For each position in the maze, we check if the move up is possible. If it is, we put 1 in that position. If it is not, we put 0. This way, we fill all 64 positions. Here is the table for moving right.
We have tables created in similar fashion for down and left as well. The last table is the table to store the current position in the maze as well as the path that got us there. If a given position was on the path we followed, we put 1 in that position. Unvisited positions show zeros. Now let's look at interrupt functions. For interrupt on pin D2, we execute change direction function. Each time the button is pressed, we add 1 to direction variable. When direction variable is equal 5, we reset it back to 1, so the direction changes in round robin fashion. Then depending on the new direction selected, we adjust the signals sent to LEDs so that the right LED is on. We perform the similar actions for any other possible directions. For interrupt on D3, we execute function move in the maze. Here, depending on which direction is currently chosen, we check if the move in that direction is possible. In this example, the direction chosen is up and we check move up table. Then we check if the position we are moving into was already visited. If it was, that means that we are retracting our steps. So we place zero in the previous position, so it is no longer on our path. And then we adjust our row coordinate in the maze. We perform the similar checks and actions for any other possible directions. And finally, we put 1 in the cell of the current state table, which reflects our current updated position. So how do we display the content of the current table on the matrix? In the main loop, we have a for loop, which displays each row of the matrix. We treat each row as a binary number, where far left bit is the least significant one. And then we build a decimal number out of that binary number. We take that number and pass it to the set row method from the LED control library to light up LEDs in the proper row. To be able to display fixed layout of the maze on an 8x8 matrix, I will print a diffusion panel with layout printed on it. Ok, so let's give it a try. You can see that by pressing the first button, I am selecting the direction and by pressing the second, we move forward in the selected direction. Those LEDs are too bright for creating video, I will try to fix it later on. Now let's try to retract few steps. works fine as well. So now that we can successfully navigate through the maze, how about adding an action that should be performed when the maze is solved? When we detect that our coordinates go outside the original maze, in our case those coordinates would be row 2, column 8, we'll send the high signal to analog pin 0. If we connect green LED to that pin, then whenever this maze is solved, the green LED would come on. Now let's try to solve the maze and see if the green LED will lit. Before we test it, let's take care of the LED brightness problem. Those little shades should do the trick. Fantastic, it works. Apart from my plans to write the code to generate mazes, I also had a plan to use this maze project to create maze lock. By solving the maze, we would be opening the magnetic lock. The concept is not much different to lighting an LED. The only difference is that magnetic lock is 12 volt device 
and cannot be controlled directly from Arduino. Here we would need a relay to be able to open or close the lock. To build that maze lock we would need magnetic lock connected to external 12 volt power supply. There is a relay between Arduino and that 12 volt circuit. On one side relay is connected to ground and 5 volts of Arduino. We also connect relay signal pin to Arduino analog pin A1. On the other side of the relay we break the 12 volts circuit and connect positive of the 12 volts power supply to the common terminal of the relay. The positive wire from magnetic lock we connect to normally open terminal of the relay. This way when we send high signal to the signal pin of the relay the relay will close the circuit activating magnetic lock. Of course the lock like this would not be used in real life. This would however be a great escape room prop. Imagine the situation where the LED maze would be by the door with magnetic lock and the two other push buttons would be located in two different rooms. This way it would take a teamwork to open that lock, which I am sure would be a lot of fun. Creating the Arduino control escape room is on my bucket list, so who knows, maybe one day I'll implement it. Let's see if we can open maze lock which we have just created. Puzzle solved, locked opened. This is all for this video. I will start working on the next one when I will try to generate mazes using existing algorithms out there and automatically populate layout tables shown in this video. Should be challenging but also a lot of fun. If you want to support my channel you can do it either through PayPal or my Patreon website. You will find links below. If you are new to my channel, subscribe. I will see you next time.